Hey guys, Scott here. So Krista Kaiser 549 just responded about the video, should a, should Brad move to Nicaragua to be a day trader? And uh, I want to read uh, his comments and then respond to them because I think uh, some things are missed in my analysis, or maybe I didn't say them correctly, or maybe I didn't, maybe I missed saying them. So I'm going to cover some of this. So Chris says, let me get this straight. He, Brad, uh, wants to be a day trader, which is a gamble in itself. <laughs> Absolutely true. Talk about a gamble. Yeah, it's it's basically being a professional uh, gambler for all for in in many ways. Yeah, uh, it's a gamble in and of itself. Much less in another country. We're gonna get to that. Second, how much money does he have saved? I must have missed saying that in the video. Third, is he selling everything he owns to move to Nicaragua? Because if so, if it doesn't work out, then he has to come uh, nothing to come back to in the U.S. Maybe finally, uh, maybe family. And finally, has he ever been to Nicaragua to test the waters? Remember, he has a fiance to satisfy too. So I'm gonna work some of this in reverse. So let's start with the fiance. So keep in mind, hopefully this was clear in the original video. His fiance is Nicaraguan from Nicaragua and has to move back to Nicaragua. Well, has to move out of the United States. Doesn't have to go back to Nicaragua. So in order to work, she has to go to Nicaragua to work. She can't work in the United States. So his fiance is going home. So they have two people, one from the U.S., one from Nicaragua, and they're in the process of choosing do they want to be in U.S. or Nicaragua. If they're in the U.S., they have a high cost of living and one, one worker. And if they're in Nicaragua, they have a low cost of, of living and two workers. That alone probably answers everything, just that statement. But she can't be in the U.S. So he has the option of either leaving his fiance or, or having a long distance relationship for an indefinite amount of time. Even if they get married, they can't move together quickly if he stays in the United States. Uh, and I don't know if he knows Nicaragua, right? So yeah, for sure, that could be a really big, Brad, what are you doing? Come down to Nicaragua and check it out and see if you like it. But uh, from a, a purely non-emotional uh, standpoint, um, all of this says Nicaragua is the only choice, period. Like, it's a slam dunk to such epic proportions. U.S. Is, isn't even an option, right? Just the U.S. doesn't make an option when it comes to the simple, his fiance can't stay there. Like, it's literally not an option for her. So, so that last little bit really just puts them into Nicaragua. It is just is what it is, right? And and how much he likes Nicaragua may not be a factor, right? If you're moving somewhere to be with your fiance, how often do you actually care about that country? I can tell you, you know, there's nearly 200 countries in the world. And if the only option was to move to one of them, roll the dice, it's the only one I can be at with my wife, then that's the one I'm moving to, right? I don't care which one it is. It could be one I really dislike, not very likely, but it could be. But that's where I would go because that's where my wife is, right? So for a lot of people, how much, maybe not Brad, but how much you like a country doesn't come into play in a, it's how I, where I have to be to be with my wife, my fiance, to continue my my personal life, my family life, right? So that that's probably a, a, a top level concern there above anything else. But so let's get to the rest. Yes, he wants to be a, gay tra a day trader. That is a gambling uh, thing, but that's what he wants to do. Whether he's in the US or Nicaragua, that's not something he's asking. Is being a day trader a good idea? Day trading is tough, but you know what? My mother made a living doing it. You can do it. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a gamble uh, and it's going to take a lot of work. Um, now, but the thing is, he says, it's a, it's a gamble on its own, much less in another country. This is, a, I think, an incorrect statement. It is a gamble, but much less in, a, in another uh, country. It all depends on how you say it, right? Much less in another country makes it sound like going to the other country makes it a bigger gamble, but it doesn't. The first thing you do if you're a smart day trader is you get out of the U.S. You can't be a smart day trader and be in the U.S. The two can't go together. You could be a successful day trader, but you're lucky because if you're staying in the U.S. and you're doing something like this, your brain isn't thinking in terms of business or trading. It's thinking in terms of luxury and emotions. The, you, there's lots of places you could go. It doesn't mean you have to come to Nicaragua, but Nicaragua is one of the good choices, one of the absolute best choices for someone who wants to do this because it lowers the risk the most. It gets you close enough, and hopefully I covered this in the original video, it gets you close enough to the places where you're going to trade, presumably he's doing U.S. trading, um, that you can trade as if you're in the U.S., but your cost of living means you have far lower risk of something going wrong and far higher amounts of money to put into your trading to make more money. So you absolutely, the very first things that someone who's smart would do if they want to be a trader is get out of the U.S. It doesn't matter if he has a fiance. It doesn't matter if he has the ability to come to Nicaragua and get residency. None of the other factors matter. That he wants to be a trader says that Nicaragua is the best option for him, period. 
right? There is nowhere that comes close to Nicaragua for that one specific thing for a U.S.-based trader. Just it, it just is what it is. Your best alternative options would be like Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, places that are relatively close to Nicaragua in, in cost of living, but uh, none of them have quite the, the excessive freedoms to be able to work and earn your money and be tax-free uh, as extremely as Nicaragua. All of them would let you do it, but none of them are quite as good. Nicaragua is the cheapest and, and most flexible. So just from wanting to be a day trader, Definitely Nicaragua, just from having a fiance who has to move here. Definitely Nicaragua. It doesn't get more, gotta be Nicaragua than these. Then he asks, how much money does he have saved? And I've seen two different spots. In one spot he said he had 50,000, one said he had 80,000. One might be cash, one might be with all the stuff that he's selling. But but it's it's a fair amount of money. And what's important to note is that uh, for a family of two, if you absolutely had to uh, survive in Nicaragua, let's say you could live on 12,000 a year if his fiance is not working. If she's working, you could probably cut that number pretty close to half. So if he was to take his fifty to eighty thousand dollars, put it into a investment fund like an uh, S and P index of uh, S and P five hundred index fund, and his fiance was to go to work and he was to never work again, they might have enough from that alone. He may be at retirement point here or really, really close to it uh, because of how little it costs to live in Nicaragua. Now, getting for two people below $1,000 a month is tough, but a lot of Nicaraguans do it below 500. So it all depends on what your, your goals are. And for all we know, they're going to live with family and could easily live below 500 a month. If you're living with family, you could live for a, family, for, for a couple in the way that they are, maybe $300 a month. I'm not saying that wouldn't be tough. It would be. But could they do it while he tries to get a business going or do they try to figure something out or he goes back to school or whatever? Absolutely. And if she's going to take a job, she could easily make that much money. Presumably she speaks English, which means she basically is going to make seven or $800 a month if she wants to coming to Nicaragua, no matter what. So their ability to live off of her is essentially guaranteed based off of some, some guesses I've made about the situation. Um, but when you look at it from that perspective, the amount he has saved while well, is necessary for him to get his trading empire going. The amount he has saved is enough that he basically can live off of that alone. They have so much money for a move to Nicaragua. Of course, they have to be frugal. They can't be stupid. And that's true for anybody. You could have a billion dollars and be stupid and lose it all and still be in, in a bad position. Uh, is he, num Number three, is he going to sell everything and move to Nicaragua? Because if so, he has nothing to go home to in the U.S. Now, that's, that's a, a reasonable point. Is he going to go all in? And that's a decision he has to make. If he's not going to go all in, then he needs to find a place to store it. But maybe he has family or someone who will keep some of it. How much do you really need to keep, though? When I move to a new place, like, for example, I know people who've moved to Nicaragua and spent roughly $1,100 getting the things they would need to move into a new apartment. That, that's a lot of money, but compared to keeping stuff in a storage unit for a year, it's not. The chances you're going to pay under $100 a month for a storage unit, not very high. The chances that you need more than $1,200 of things to move back to a country to get started, not that high, especially if you moved into an American apartment. When you're coming to a Nicaraguan apartment, yeah, you need a few more things typically. But for all we know, they're going to live with family. I'm just guessing. I'm just saying for all we know, there, there could be situations that we're missing as far as what they need in each place. But do they need to sell everything? Do they need to liquidate all of their lives in the U.S. and go completely in on Nicaragua? Probably. Why? One, he wants to be a trader. So the U.S. shouldn't be an option for him. He already has to find an alternative country to live in. So even if he doesn't like Nicaragua, the U.S. isn't a reasonable option. I do realize that a lot of not smart traders will stay in the U.S., some for other reasons, right? I understand some people have to stay because the opposite. Well, well I married someone and they have a job in the U.S. I can't leave. Sure. But when it comes to trading as the only factor, you have to leave the U.S. For him, that's the only factor here. He has nothing tying him to the U.S. from a job, and his fiance is pulling him out of the U.S., not into it. So for him, no matter what, he has to be out of the U.S. and he, to be a trader and to be with his fiance. So that he needs to get out of the U.S. is, is just a given. So selling all this stuff is an absolute yes, no question. Then, uh, what if he has to move back? Well, the chances that he has to move back is basically zero because living outside the U.S. is so low cost. Now, you can do things to make it high cost, but you can do any, uh, practically unlimited number of things to make it low cost to the point where it is generally easier to find good income and live better when you're living abroad, even though when you're in the U.S. there are more jobs, but more jobs at a higher cost of living so that the 
end result isn't as good. Of course, if all Americans moved abroad, that would shift, but they're not doing that, right? At the number of people who actually move abroad, it remains more advantageous to be abroad than to be in the U.S. for an American worker. It just is what it is. Uh, so and COVID did some of that to make it even more true. But because of the cost of living in the U.S., because of the taxes in the U.S., because of those overheads in the U.S., being remote is a really important factor for him in every possible way. So should he sell everything? Yes, because he wants to have that money to operate his trading with. He wants that money to be living on, and he doesn't want to be bleeding out that money or having the mental overhead of having this stuff in the United States while he's living abroad, because there's nothing in his life that would make it make any sense at all to ever entertain returning to the U.S. as a place to live or work. That doesn't mean he doesn't love it there. It doesn't mean that it's not a wonderful place. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want to visit his family there and do all kinds of things. But because he wants the tax advantage, because he wants the low cost of living advantage, because he wants the freedoms and flexibilities uh, of living abroad, and because his fiance needs him to be abroad, they have no reasonable way to consider the United States for the foreseeable future. Now, at some point, they're going to get married. That's what fiance means. They're going to be married. And at some number of years after that, they can consider an option to move back to the U.S., under most circumstances, not all. It's a maybe. So maybe they could move back to the U.S. and he could consider working from or taking a job in the U.S. and she would be able to take a job in the U.S., presumably. But that is years away and a maybe and probably not something that they would want to entertain simply because of all the other problems it creates. All the things that they want to do with their lives aren't facilitated by that in the things that they described. Right Now, factors can change, but if it's a number of years away, then you don't want to be paying for storage for years for stuff that will be old and you've been living without during that time. I totally get the emotional feeling and in some cases the financial analysis of, well, you want to have a fallback. You want a way to come back to the U.S. Absolutely, I get that. You always want a way home. However, the cost of moving back to the United States is very low on its own. You don't need to put, under normal circumstances, your lives into storage and hope that it all works out and pay for it to be in storage while you live abroad. Now, I put all my life into storage when I lived abroad uh, prior to moving permanently to Nicaragua, at which point we made very different decisions. However, I did that by storing it in my father's barn. He built a storage unit inside the barn. It was all sealed and everything. And I was able to keep a large amount of uh, furniture, my kids' toys, extra clothing for different seasons, and all kinds of things. We had a very large, it was like a, a 12 by 12, like it was big storage unit, enough you could walk around in it, have shelves, actually look at things and take things in, put it away, take other things out, and still have a lot in storage. That worked out fantastically. We didn't have to pay per month. That made a lot of sense because we would move between countries and we'd shift things as we did so. And we'd, you know, go find things that we wanted, put things back that we didn't want. It was, it was really useful, but we were also going through a single point in the U.S. every three to six months and we're able to do it for free. Were we paying for it? It wouldn't make sense. If it was not in a central location that we knew we were coming back to, it wouldn't make sense. If he can't put it by a major airport that he might pass through, it's not going to make sense. There's just a lot of things that make storing things not make sense. It feels good. I get it. But financial analysis almost always is going to say that putting things into storage long term is generally a mistake. There's rarely a time that that is going to make sense. And, and now hopefully he's got some family who are like, look, you got a few things storm here. Easy, right? Maybe not furniture, but other things. So you have something to come back to. Typically, you're not going to want to store uh, furniture for a long time. Furniture isn't that expensive anyway. Um, and you're often going to want it new, either just because you don't want it sitting around, you don't want rats getting into it, you don't want it to age out or whatever, right? You don't want it to get musty, um, and replacing it is generally just not that expensive. So, I, yeah, I know that this sounds like when you read it at a really high level, is Nicaragua right for Brad and his fiance? Oh, this seems really risky, but the reality is it is anything but risky. Nicaragua is the safest option he has. The safest for his fiance situation, the safest for the job that he wants situation, the safest for the long-term career, the safest for his taxes, the lowest cost of living, every aspect that he brought to this equation. Now, there's many he didn't bring. There's things we don't know. But of every single item that he highlighted, Every one of them didn't say Nicaragua was an option. None of them said that Nicaragua was okay. Every single one of them, Nicaragua was the best possible option, right down to that's his fiance's home country. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a contrived scenario. He brought it to us because his fiance is Nicaraguense and she has to move out of the United States. And so the one place she knows she can go is back home. It's the one place that she's able to work. He has this magic situation where he also is able to work from Nicaragua because the career he wants is best served from Nicaragua than anywhere else. So it's the perfect combination of factors. But 
it isn't actually. If you if you look at this from an actual analysis standpoint, yes, getting married, always risky. Dating, it's risky. Having human relationships, they're all risky. They're messy. That's how bad things happen. It's also how good things happen. And being a, a, a day trader, right? Yeah, also risky. Really tough job. Very hard. Very risky. But if those are the things that they want to do, get married and, and have this career, then every single aspect that they've disclosed makes Nicaragua the far and away best option for every individual item, making it the best for their overall picture by just an incredible degree. I'm not saying that Nicaragua is the right choice for everybody. I'm not saying that's the right choice for most people. This is a scenario where it's hard to actually fathom how any place could end up being so perfect. Now, hopefully he likes the weather. Hopefully he likes the food. Hopefully he likes whatever town his fiance is from. Hopefully he has seen it before and is already okay with coming here. There's a lot of things he may like or not like, but they're all things like weather and food, and hopefully he can speak Spanish or can learn it pretty quickly, but he doesn't need to because he's looking at being a trader and he can do all of his work in English. He doesn't really need to do his work in anything, right? It's all just numbers. So good luck to Brad and thanks, Chris, for the follow-up. Um, but I really do think for the the reasons you mentioned, yeah, it's, it's Nicaragua is the answer as much as the U.S. feels right? Because it's your home country, not, not yours, Chris, but because it's all of our home country, right? Whether it's, whether it's Brad or Chris or me, it gives us an emotional feeling of our home country has something special to offer us. And it does to some degree. It's what we know. It's what's comfortable. It's what's familiar. But when it comes to the risk in our lives, in many cases, for a lot of people, our home countries simply don't have a good risk profile for us. I'm not talking about getting shot or anything like that. The U.S. is a pretty safe country. Not as safe as Nicaragua, but really close, like to the point where it doesn't matter. But we're talking about the financial risk. We're talking about life risks. We're talking about career success risks or ability to have a family risks or the chances of being able to have uh, our own rental home or even purchase a home. All of those things are more likely to be successes in Nicaragua and least likely to be in America for the countries within the reasonable locality, right? North America, Northern South America, places that are reasonably close to the U.S. because he does want to be a trader in, from the U.S. And so you can't really consider just every country in the world. But those in the region put the U.S. as the highest risk, the absolute worst of the options for them as a couple, and Nicaragua as the best, and all other countries falling somewhere in between, mostly leaning very far towards the U.S., very few having the advantages of Nicaragua or coming reasonably close to it. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe.